three plays. 56 yards in a minute, seven seconds. The Bee Diggers did commit a couple of penalties on that drive, but still scored on Eric Garcia's five-yard run. The extra point was good, and Brush leads Platte Valley 14-0. I'm John Beltran with Dave Urig. Back deep to receive our Sterling Zender and Chase Maxey and Jacob Fector to kick it off for the Bee Diggers with 11-13 to go in the second. Fector's kick is uh, much deeper than the first one. Caught by Maxey at the 14, running to his left at the 20 along the sideline, and he's going to be dragged out of bounds at around the 32-yard line. Ethan Brost, the sophomore for the Bee Diggers, made the play, and Platte Valley will have the football at around the 33-yard line, a return of 19. It's time for the defense to do what they've been doing. They've already come up with two turnovers, an interception by Kyle Hefner, and a fumble recovery by Derek Lynch. You know, last week we talked several times during the regular season how important it was that they come up with some three and outs, and they had a couple of those last week's. This would be a great time for another. Platte Valley hasn't seen this type of deficit the entire season. And a shotgun is Jordan Smith, and he's going to hand it off to Float, running left. He gets around a beat digger defender. He's got a seam to the outside, a first down to the 50. A gain of 17 before Bruce Melendez made the tackle. And, Dave, you mentioned it, the Platte Valley running game has been very effective the bee diggers do have some concerns and that's why it's nice to get off to a 14 nothing lead you know floats doing a great job running the football but you got to give that offensive line and those um wide receivers of platte valley credit because they're blocking it they're stock blocking everybody inside and guys are having a hard time coming off those blocks and and containing float first and 10 for platte valley the ball is resting right at the 50 yard line smith is in a shotgun receivers out to the left and right the backs are beside smith and Smith will take off to the football, running right, tries to break out of a tackle, but cannot. The ball is fumbled again, and I think the Beat Diggers have recovered another fumble. Or was he down? No, the Brush Beat Diggers have recovered a third fumble. Rosenbrock has it at the 47-yard line. Jordan Smith thought he was down at the 48, but Rosenbrock came up with it, and the Beat Diggers have come up with their third turnover of the game. You know, he was close to being down, but I'll tell you what, you got to give the diggers credit and give them the football because they're the ones that come up with it, and they're ripping and tearing at it, and they're aggressive, and, and they're just shutting down that Platte Valley offense just by having all the gang tackling and driving their feet a lot like they did last week. Rush defensively is playing Platte Valley's game, forcing turnovers. Yeah, that was very, very close. First and ten for the bead diggers. At their own 46-yard line, they'll mark it officially. Kukas in motion to the right. They give the Weiser, breaks out of a tackle behind the line of scrimmage, dives to around the 48-yard line. And Sterling Zender made the tackle. This is a sure tackling team. They're not even going to give him the 48. Just a gain of one. Second down and nine for Brush with 10-10 to go in the second and the Bee Diggers leading 14 to nothing. Weiser will now check out of the game. And Skyler Seawald's in. What a luxury to have that rotation. Oh, my goodness. They're both big, powerful guys. Weiser runs with his shoulders out there in front of his, his knees. And Seawald runs a little more straight up and down. But they're both very effective. On second down and nine for the 47. Kukas in motion to the right. And there's the give right up the middle. And nothing there for Skyler Seawald. That time it was read perfectly by Seth Valadez. And, in fact, they lost yardage to the 45-yard line. They might give them the 46, a loss of one third and ten. You know, it's, uh, Platte Valley, again, it, with the exception of float, where they didn't used to have a, a free safety at all, with the exception of float, everybody else is up there on that line of scrimmage. So Platte Valley's just daring the diggers to throw the football. We know the diggers can throw the football. Garcia will be under center. We say that because C.J. Kukas has quarterbacked in these situations before. Third and 10 for the 46. Kukas in motion to the right. And there is the pitch right to Tanner Morrow, trying to swing it to the outside, but he cannot get around the Platte Valley defense. He was tackled by Ryan Smith along the far sideline. He got back to the line of scrimmage, and Morrow gets up slowly. Fourth and 10, and the Bee Diggers will have to punch with 8.47 to go in the second quarter and leading Platte Valley 14-0. You know, this is a, the name of the game, though, in these championship situations, field position. So the diggers, it's really important that they get a good snap here. They get good coverage down the field, not have any miscues like they had last week down there on one of the big punts that Kukas had, and just, you know, play some ball control on um, football. Kukas awaiting the snap. 
Boy, Platte Valley's got eight at the line of scrimmage. There it is. They've got some pressure, but Kukas gets it off another gorgeous punt. And over end. Float has it at the 20-yard line. Stutter steps, and he tries to get around Rosenbrock and does. And then he's taken down at the 25 by Kyle Muir. An excellent open field tackle. Rosenbrock is still on the ground at the 23-yard line, and hopefully he's okay. They need him without a doubt. And looks like Rosenbrock is okay, just limping a little bit back towards the defensive huddle. So Platte Valley has it at their own 25 with 8, 12 to go in the second. Yeah, he's limping back towards the sideline, so Rosenbrock's going to take a break here. They're going to go ahead and take him out of the game. They take one guy out that's got a cast on his arm. They put in the other one. That's Seawald taking his place. First and 10 for Platte Valley at their own 25-yard line. Receivers out to the left and right. Smith in a shotgun formation, and Platte Valley calls a timeout. They had some confusion there with Smith and Caleb Caddy, the wingback. So we'll take it with them. 8-12 to go, second quarter. Brush 14, Platte Valley nothing on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. 